And you touched on this a little bit before, but about the alignment of goals and expectations. Do you have anything else to add to that? Any, you know, how that could be, because that could create major issues. I can see if, if we don't, if you don't address that early on, right? Yeah, it could. And I think, you know, it's really important early on to say, to make sure that you're both aligned in terms of your own, your own expectations. So a lot of times, again, people will be like, hey, let's, let's start something together. And, and you really like each other and you both like multifamily and you both like doing deals and you both like the idea of having money. But usually what happens is somebody ends up feeling like they're putting way more time or may, way more money or way more effort into the business than somebody else. And you know, if I've got just, I'll give you an example. If I've got a young single guy who doesn't have any kids what is his priority going to be? It's make as much money as he can. And he's going to spend, you know, all of his waking hours working to try to make that business happen, at least if he's a go-getter. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or someone like myself who has four kids and my kids are all in sports every single night and tournaments every weekend. And I have a spouse, I'm not going to be able to give 80 hours a week to a business. You know, I'm going to work hard and strategically before my kids come home from school, but I'm just not going to have that you know, this, this business is my life because my, I'm trying to build a business that fits within my life, not make business my life. And it's just an example where they might be extremes, but where if we try to build a company together, this guy who's working 80 hours a week is going to be frustrated when I'm not taking calls from seven to nine, because I'm at my kid's volleyball game. And right. so we need to have those conversations up front to say, what are my realistic expectations for what I can give to the business? How many hours and maybe if one person's going to put in more hours, the other one's going to put in more money. So you work through those things and you say, how are you going to feel if you are working X hours a week and I'm not? Or, you know, you want to grow in a year. So you want to put $100,000 a piece into the business, but yet I can only afford to put in $25,000 right now. You know, who's going to cover these costs if we lose a deal or back out after we've put in, you know, $100,000 in escrow? So all of those kind of things are really important and it's usually time and money commitment. And so we need to ask those real questions of what are you really able to do? How quickly do you want to grow a business? And, and am I on the same page as to my expectations of how quickly we grow? When we hire somebody, you know, should we hire someone and build it so that they come, even though it's going to cost us a lot of money or we have to go into debt to do it? Um, and, and if you don't have those conversations up front, then as soon as you hit the next roadblock, there's going to be conflict and pain points that you could have mitigated if you had just discussed them up front and said, here's our vision together for the company. Here's how quickly we're going to get there. Here's what we have to offer and the bandwidth that we have financially and with our time. And how do we then methodically say, okay, here's our five-year plan and let's back into who's going to do what, at what speed, and at what pace, and how much money injected, and be able to kind of plan it out where everybody's in alignment to begin with. And I think that that would make for a lot less, you know, business divorces um, if we did all of those things up front. Yeah. So being really thorough with those communications, get run through these different scenarios, and. Yeah, discuss how where everybody's at with that. Yeah, makes sense. For sure. And if you're on a different page, you know, that doesn't mean that you can't do deals together, but maybe you say, let's do a deal together. If the deal fits and the timing fits well within what we've got going, let's do it. But mm -hmm. that doesn't mean we have to grow a company together. And I'll give you an example. So I, I have uh, two partners who we've done 200 apartment units together in three different deals as a joint venture. We didn't syndicate them. And one of my partners and I thought, hey, we've done three deals. Let's start a company. Well, when we started talking about let's start a company, his ideas and his time frame and the amount, you know, how quickly he wanted to grow and inject money was very different than mine because our families were at a completely different place in life where we just couldn't come together and have agreement on this is exactly how we want to do this. And so we said, that's okay. We have a great thing going when we've done a deal, you know, we're, we're, creating a business marriage on a deal by deal basis. And when there's deals that don't work for us, we just won't do them together. You go do that deal with someone else. I'll do this deal with someone else. And when we find the one that we're well aligned with, you know, where we want to go at that time, we'll, we'll still do it together and be great partners. We're just not going to create a big company together because those discussions made it evident that that wasn't the right way for us to move forward.